beautiful YouTube family, Lisa A. Romano here, the Breakthrough Life Coach. And today a um, YouTuber wrote in and asked me to give her some tools when it comes to setting boundaries and basically telling people that she loves no. The dirty N-word, no. That's the real dirty N-word in this country or in this planet because when you tell people no, they really get pissed off. So um, over the years, I've developed different coping skills to help me heal my codependency. Again, those of you who follow my work, you know the spiel. For those of you who are just happening on this video and my work for, you know, for the first time, I discovered that I was codependent many, many years ago. And that codependency had infected, infiltrated my entire life. I was co codependent on everybody. I was codependent on everything. I worried about what the UPS guy thought. I worried about what the PTA moms thought. I worried about what the people at the church thought when I used to go to church. I worried about what the, my kids' teachers thought. I worried about what my ex-husband thought. I worried about what my children thought. It was a constant Ferris wheel in my mind where I was constantly worrying about what people thought about me. Now, I call that thinking below the veil, thinking below the veil of consciousness thinking, because it's reactive thinking, um, and it stems from feeling like you're not good enough, in my opinion, as a child, and that stems from being treated with indifference, and that, as a child, that stems from, you know, having parents that were indifferent to your experiences, or having parents that just didn't do a very good job of validating you. A child has to feel seen by the time they're two or three years old, at least three. At a minimum, three years old. You know, a child has to feel like me. I matter. What I think is important. Mommy can see me. Daddy can hear me. And a child makes those decisions because mommy and daddy have consistently validated the child's needs and have made the child feel psychologically seen by how. The only way you can make a child feel psychologically valid is if you trust what's coming out of their mouth and you tend to their emotions. So that means we have to become a lot more attuned with our children, and that means that parents have to understand that it's our responsibility to take care of our children. Our children are not supposed to take care of us. We are supposed to worry about our children's feelings. They are not supposed to be worried about our feelings. They're not. A child gets to feel psychologically seen when you validate what the child feels what the child feels. So even if you think it's ridiculous and you think it's hokey pokey and silly, that is really not the issue. You're, you are a mature adult. We have a, 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 a mature adult in the making when they're two and three. And so when, whatever they're feeling, we have to make sure that we're tending to their emotions. At a minimum, we're making them understand that we see what they're feeling. We can help them work out, no, no, we don't bite in this house. No, 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 we don't hit, no, no, no. You're angry. That's okay that you're angry, but no, no, we don't bite, sweetheart. No, no, no. We don't bite. We don't bite. You want to bang on the drum? You can bang on the drum. You want to stomp your feet? You can stomp your feet. You know, you can do that, but you, you can't hit your sister. You can't bite. That's how you help a child feel seen. Mommy sees my frustration, and she's not labeling me bad. She understands that I have this emotional thing happening, and I have no control over it, and Mommy's going to help me control it. Now, I preface this video with how to set boundaries with that type of information because if you don't know how to set boundaries or you don't know how to say no, it really will help you to heal those situations by learning why you don't know how to set boundaries. <laughs> because healthy, well-adjusted people, self-actualized, self-realized people, they understand their internal guidance system. And they're naturally turning into self or someone like me. It wasn't natural for me. I had to teach myself how to tune into self. I had to teach myself how to be fair. I had to teach myself how to hold myself accountable. I had to teach myself how to let go of expecting other people to be what I wanted them to be. Um, I had to let go of people who said they were one way, but they were actually another way. I had to learn how to um, set boundaries with the people in my life that said they were that would say to me I'm good. I'm kind. I'm codependent. I'm this I'm that you know, I'm really a good person. I'm a loyal person. I'm a person of character I had to let go of Dealing with people who would tell me how they were but in real life they showed up as abusive or condescending or 
um, like a martyr. Um, and so I've had to, it wasn't natural for me. I had to teach myself how to set boundaries and I had to teach myself how to set boundaries because no one in my life taught me how to set boundaries. So why? Because I came from a very codependent home. My parents, in my opinion, again, my opinion, live below the veil of consciousness. That doesn't make them bad people. That just means they made a lot of mistakes raising me, my brother, and my sister, in my opinion. Okay. So when we know why we have trouble setting boundaries, I think it's just so much easier to set a boundary in the future. So one of the coping skills that I've learned <clears throat> to help me set boundaries is I actually, I wrote a couple of notes down. The first thing that I do <clears throat> is I set a boundary in my head by asking myself how I feel. So I remember experimenting with my best friend that I was very codependent on back in the day. And I remember one time she said to me, can you come to my house early? Now I knew what that meant. You know, I, <laughs> that meant, can you come to my house, help me set up before the guests get here and help me calm down because I'm nervous. I have social anxiety and I want my house to look perfect. And I, I feel better when you're standing next to me, when people come into my house, which means that I had to get done earlier. I had to go over there and help her clean up. I understood what she really meant. Now. There were times, there were issues in my life with my, with my best friend where I love her so much, but I had to come to a point where I realized that there were just so many things that she was willing to do for me. And our relationship was very off balance. It was very good in some ways, but when it came to the relating part, you know, um, of every day, it was just, I just felt like I was giving a lot more than what I was, what I was receiving. And I was feeling, I was feeling depressed about it. I was feeling um, resentful about it, which is all negative feelings. I was feeling um, just pushed to the side. I was feeling um, undervalued in the relationship. And so the, the relationship was definitely lopsided, just off balance. And when I began to set boundaries, it sounded, what happened was I began to tap into myself. So when people would ask me a question, instead of saying, oh, yeah, sure, you know, like the little chihuahua puppy dog that's on the dashboard of cars, you know, yeah, 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 I'll do that. Yeah, 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 I should, should have been running myself into the ground. I started stopping. I was more present and I was very aware. I knew when someone asked me a question to do something, that was my signal to become present. Like, you know, where am I? She's asking me a question. It's a yes or a no. And I actually have a choice because I'm an adult and I don't have to do everything people ask me to do. So the first thing that you want to do is get very, very present every time someone asks you a question, especially if it's a yes or a no question and you're playing with boundaries. So when someone asks you a question, just become really, really present, become really, really mindful and ask you, become aware that they're asking you a yes or no question. Once the yes or no question has been presented, the next step is to ask yourself how you feel. Just imagine what the internal compass is saying. Do I want to do this or don't want to do this? Do I want to do it or no? Is it yes or no? If you're truthful with yourself and you don't let allow the old programming, codependency, and fear of making other people angry, which is a part of being codependent. If you're truthful with yourself, you'll probably get an answer pretty quickly. You'll know whether you really want to do something or not. And that's the first part of the boundary is honoring that truth and gently saying no. So the second part of, well, the third part of the boundary is first get present. You know, you want to get, I have to write this down. First, you want to get present and then you want to set the boundary. You want to say yes or no. And the third part of this is to be non-resistant. So what do I mean by that is that you, we have to stop attaching to outcomes when Whenever I hear the word attachment, I force myself to think about, you know, um, an image of, for those of you, I'm not a religious person, but I use, um, I rely on the teachings of the old or from wherever to help guide me. And um, I pull, I pull what resonates with me. And when I think about, when I think about the word attach, every time I think about the word attach, I think about Christ being attached to the cross. The cross to me represents things that are of the earthly nature, which also represents other people. Anything that is of this world, which is perishable, because everything will perish. We will perish. The trees will perish. I'm not being morbid. It's just a fact. It's a scientific fact. 
that everything will perish. So when I hear the word attach, I think about being attached to a cross, you know, and how painful it is and how painful it was for Christ to be attached to a cross, nailed to a cross. And so the third part of learning how to set boundaries, in my opinion, is playing with the idea of non-resistance. Do not be attached or nailed to a cross or nailed to an outcome. So that means that whatever happens in the next moment, you have to be non-resistant to. So that means if your mother-in-law gets an attitude when you say, no, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it over there this afternoon. I'm just I'm swamped with work. You know, how about next week? And when she gets pissy, that's when you practice non-resistance. I love practicing non-resistance because when I'm non-resistant, you can't, you can't, you can't activate my root chakra. You can't mess with my head if I'm non-resistant. You want to call me a bitch. You want to make fun of me. You want to say that I'm an idiot. I'm a this. I'm that. And as long as I stay non-resistant to what's coming out of your mouth, you can't activate anything that's negative in me. And then we can't be two pigs that are wrestling in the mud. You'll be wrestling in the mud all by yourself, <laughs> which I think is awesome. So when you're setting, setting a boundary, you have to really come into alignment with the idea of non-resistance. And so when you say no, you have to be non-resistant to what happens in the next moment, which means that you have to be accepting. Now, accepting doesn't mean that you like it. It just means that you understand that you're not in control of how someone else felt about you saying no. You know, a practical thing to remember is that when you tell people no, they're going to get angry. If you've been a codependent your whole life and you're you're the aunt or the, or the mom, the Kool-Aid mom, or you're the PTA mom, or you know, you're the soccer dad and you're the baseball dad, you know, and you're the guy that's always taking care of everybody else. You're the rock of the family. People are gonna get really pissed off when you stop inviting them over for dinner, when you stop being the one to send birthday cards and no one sends your family birthday cards when you stop making the phone calls to make sure the whole family stays together, when you stop organizing this event and stop organizing that event, when you start saying, no, I'm sorry, you know, you're going for a manicure when you should be at karate with your kid. You know, I'm not taking six kids to karate. I don't want that responsibility. I could use a manicure myself, by the way. <laughs> so, you know, when you start playing with boundaries and, and, and using your beautiful internal GPS or your internal guidance system, your compass, we have a compass. And what's really awesome about coming into alignment with the compass, oh my goodness, I'm just realizing how red I am. Anyway. I digress again. Um, when we start really coming into alignment with our compass, we come into alignment with greater purpose. We come into alignment with higher self. We come one step closer to becoming self-actualized because our compass is helping us lead, lead us towards becoming self-actualized. So when I say no, and I'm honoring myself, I'm one step closer to honoring myself, loving myself, and becoming self-actualized. When I learn to be okay with people being upset with me, I'm one step closer to being self-actualized and, and living my life's purpose. Because your compass and your internal guidance system has only one purpose, and it's no different than the, the cells in your body. And the cells in your body are designed to keep you healthy and optimal. The cells in your body are designed to keep you alive. Your human body, it can do what no defense system anywhere from any country could do. Your body is constantly looking for ways to keep you afloat, to keep you breathing, to help you survive. And when we come into alignment with what our body is trying to tell us, we survive in a way that, that is just so different than the way that we've survived before when we're not at our optimum. When we listen to the GPS, when we listen to our compass, and we begin to set boundaries, yes or no, we come into alignment with our true purpose, and doors begin to open for us. The universe responds, or actually we're tuning ourselves up to a specific vibration. And what will happen is we almost step into this reality where all these things that we've always wanted begin to show up. Not because the universe is giving them to us. The universe doesn't give anything to us. Everything that is exists on a vibrational plane. 
And when we start honoring the self and coming into alignment with the internal guidance system, we start listening to the body, the divine body that only has one purpose, and that's to keep us alive. And the internal guidance system that is always telling us yes or no, that most of the time we, ne we neglect and we, we ignore. When we finally come into alignment with, with, with those two aspects of ourselves, then what happens is miracles begin to show up. I hope this video has helped you. I'm looking forward to relaunching my next coaching program. My coaching program is in full swing right now. I have a bunch of people taking, pay, taking the program. It is amazing the transformations. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. We are working on some promo video now to do some testimonials. Um, it's just amazing. I'm really, really proud of the program, and I'm proud of every single person who is in the program who is working these keys to emotional transformation who had faith in the blueprint that I created towards their miraculous healing. And um, I'm so, so ecstatic because every time someone heals, the world changes. The world literally changes. I said to a client the other day, I said, think about all the drama and the trauma that you have saved this world by getting well. Think about your children. Think about your children's children. Think about the chaos that you have, you have just eliminated in the future, in the future, because you got healthy in your mind, because you figured things out in your mind. Think about your children and their children. Think about the chaos that you've saved from their lives. Think about the world. Think about how much trauma and drama you have saved your world and my world and the world at large. Now think about how... The world is going to change because you got well. Think about how your children's lives are going to change because you got well. Think about your grandchildren's lives. Think about their trajectory. They're not even here yet. But the, the eggs that will be your grandchildren are in the ovaries of your daughters. Think about the fact that you've healed and think about how that effect is, what that effect is having on your child and think about how the world has changed because one person got well one person got well that's how important you are on our planet that's how important you are in our universe one person can make a true difference just by changing their own lives so let me know what you think namaste bye <laughs>